What's cracking guys? Omar Esau here back with another video. In this video today, it's another special one with the one and only Dr. Eric Helms, the legendary Helms. Today talking about nutrition, diet adherence, what makes weight loss sustainable, really given some true nuggets of knowledge from being a coach for over 10 years, coaching the best of the best when it comes to body composition, when it comes to strength and performance. And this brings me to an exciting announcement. I can now finally say it, the Nutrition for Lifters program that we did in collaboration with Dr. Eric Helms drops today. It's available right now for a big discount 40 or I think yeah 40 45 percent off it's 47 dollars right now what it is it's two programs it comes as a bundle you can buy them separately but one's nutrition for fat loss the other is nutrition for building muscle consider this your automated dieting coach this brings the expertise of Eric Helms to condense all the useful information on the channel we get you know from beginner I'd say to intermediate levels of knowledge when it comes to nutrition this goes all the way to advance what you need to know in order to optimize your body and this is a self-correcting macro calculator that comes with it it's not like your simple one that you google online and you use this like I said before it's kind of like an automated dieting coach where it helps you determine the optimal ratio of macronutrients so fats to carbohydrates what calories you should be eating the rate of weight gain you should be making and I think this is something that's very important that has high utility. We price it so it's affordable for everyone out there. There's an entire video lecture series included with it to educate you on nutrition to give you the power to empower you to make the proper choices and get the best physique possible. And also lastly included is a guide, two guides actually. So Nutrition for Lifters is available now at kaizentraining.com. I'm going to link that in the description before this video begins. We're very excited to release this. We've been working on this now for quite some time. And like I said before, I think it's going to help a lot of people out. So if you need help with your nutrition, if you don't look the way that you want to, and you want to educate yourself, and you want something actionable that can help you out and tell you what to do, this is for you. Check that out, linked in the description, and enjoy this video with Eric all about diet adherence. If you enjoyed this collaboration, make sure to like the video, and let's get it started. This is, uh, you know, I don't want to break, Eric, but this is uh, my mansion. Um, mm. You know what I like more than my mansion, though, or, and my uh, collection of nice cars? What? Knowledge. Knowledge? Knowledge. Knowledge. Today, you had an interesting conversation talking about dieting mistakes or how people frame dieting, bulking, cutting, or they seem to have that perception that you perpetually either need to be bulking or you need to be cutting, and just the approach they take when it comes to lifting. And you being a coach for so long, you've seen some critical errors. And so I want to talk about that today, a unique perspective. Absolutely. So yeah, as always, honored to be on the channel. Uh, and I think it's interesting in that in the fitness industry, we normally look up to the people who achieve the peak fitness as the leaders and people to learn from. Um, you know, bodybuilders are very commonly leaders in the fitness industry, and that's where we get our nutrition knowledge from. Yeah. But I can tell you as a bodybuilding coach and a bodybuilder myself, um, the thing I hear most often from bodybuilders is, I'm really not good at this whole maintenance thing. Yeah. I know how to cut, I know how to bulk, but just hanging around in maintenance, it feels like I'm just spinning my wheels. Like, I'm having extreme personality, I want to play to my strengths. Yeah. You know, and this is men and women. I know I'm kind of having this deep bro voice, but it's... It could be, it's either way. It's true, it's, it's, it, and it's very much both sides and, and both types of clients. Um, and this is interesting because the general pop who's looking to bodybuilders to get nutrition knowledge, the thing, what, what do they need? Yeah. They need maintenance. They yeah. need the one skill that bodybuilders are actually the worst at. Right. So they learn how to go on bulking programs, they learn how to go on cutting programs, but they have no ability to change their lifestyle because they just don't get taught that. But well, wait, so what is the relevance for a average natural lifter to learn maintenance? Well, the reality is, is that you know, bulking is a slow process regardless if you're natural. Yeah. And you need to develop nutritional habits that are, that are you know, flying above your head. <laughs> the reality is that you need to develop nutritional habits that will, uh, you know, look a little more like normal life. So if, if bulking is simply trying to gain a few pounds a year of lean muscle mass, you need to develop habits that will help you get there just pretty easily. Uh, you know, in the If It Fits Your Macros community, we have this concept that if you just track your protein, carbs, and fat, and you know your calories, you, you've hacked the system. Yeah. Uh, but I can't tell you how many people report that they feel like they're prisoners to macros. Right. They can't go out to eat. And all the same problems we saw in the clean eating kind of era uh, with these restrictive meal plans come about through being restricted to macros. 
So what I always try to get people to understand is that learning maintenance, maintenance is an extremely valuable skill. And being able to maintain your body weight and maintain a healthy lifestyle yeah. without putting anything on the scale, without tracking things, is critical. Uh, and that's something that people just aren't, aren't good at. So things I like to try to get my athletes to do at some point, or especially for my general pop people, is if they want to diet and not track macros, we need to set up a system for that. So there's some ways to do that. You know, like having structure, a certain number of meals, and certain hard, fast rules that you use to develop habits. The thing with it, if it fits your macros approach, is it's really loose. And it's great, flexible dieting is fantastic, but it's not great when you've never had experience with dieting. Right. So when you're a trainer and you've been doing this whole nutrition thing forever and you just tell someone off the street, hey, just track your macros, it's gonna be perfect. Like, what? It what does that even mean? It doesn't go well, yeah. you know? They need structure. So what that might look like is having, say, four fixed meals per day with like a protein serving, liquid, fruit, and a vegetable, and then saying, right, I'm not gonna eat after, say, 9 p.m., and just kind of behavioral-based approach, and then trying to get a connection with tracking, you know, how do I feel when I eat? Am I hungry, or am I just having cravings? And then trying to connect the feelings of, of true physiological hunger versus cravings with what's happening on the scale. Uh, and among my bodybuilders, what I get them to do in the off season is they step away from tracking macros because they've developed that skill from contest prep. They know what they're eating, yeah. but not track it. Just make, make sure you get a minimum amount of protein and then just track your body weight and we want to see a steady, slow climb. And they struggle with this at first because they're not trying to hit certain numbers, they're not trying to enforce a surplus, they're not eating by the numbers anymore, and they have to start paying attention to their natural body signals and then associate that with how they feel when they eat and what's happening on the scale. And that's kind of crazy that you, people maybe erroneously associate you purely with the flexible dieting approach, the if it fits your macros, but you're saying first off that for a lot of individuals that you don't always have to track your macros, behavioral changes are more important, but also then you mentioned something that I find interesting when it comes to dieting or just eating in general, the concept that you should never be hungry. Right? right, or that you should eat until you're full, or all these sorts of things, and how your hunger and ways can lie to you, and that it's not necessary for you to be full all the time. Absolutely, you know, there was a, a funny thing that happened when there was the kind of the split off between the if it fits your macros and the clean eating groups, is that because they were in conflict, they disavowed all the principles of each other's systems. Yep. And one of the understandings that the clean eating crowd had was that when you diet, it's going to be hard, yeah. and you're going to be hungry. Right. And the kind of the if it fits your macros crowd said, no, you can have whatever you want. Yeah. You can work it in. If it fits, it fits. And you should be able to have delicious meals even when you're dieting. And what this has resulted in is this kind of false belief that dieting won't get hard at a certain point. Yeah. Um, and this false belief that the goal of each meal is to eat something that's really tasty and that you enjoy and it's highly palatable on you know a shoestring budget for calories. Yeah. And it ends up being extremely difficult to actually fulfill. And you think the goal is, well, if I'm, if I'm hungry, I'm doing this wrong. Yeah. So therefore, I need to really make sure I bulk up my meals. I use things like Walden Farms, Splenda, Diet Soda. Yeah. I want to have you know sp spaghetti squash, <laughs> all this stuff to try to make things taste amazing. Yeah. When in reality, you just need to shift your perspective and go, you know what? I'm going to have breakfast tomorrow. Yeah. It's 9 p.m. I'm pretty hungry. How about I just go to sleep? Yeah. That's okay, that's part of dieting. And understanding that the goal should be to have structure. It should be to eat primarily, you know, single item food ingredients, and then have some things that make you feel like you have some agency. And if you want a Snickers bar, you can have it, damn it. Yeah. You can make it work. But most of the time, it's fruits, vegetables, lean meats, low fat dairy, all the things that are typically a part of a normal kind of clean or clean eating approach. Yeah. It's just but having the freedom to have your cravings is what's really better than the, that, that approach. So it's kind of a blended thing that gives you the best of both worlds. Walden's Farm is still real to me, damn it. I, I, yeah. I, I am mad at the Walden Farm's uh, syrup. Yeah. I mean... It is tasty, but like, yeah. I, I know you mean where like people are staring down that long road and they just think to themselves, damn, I'm so hungry, I somehow have to fix this. It's like, no, hunger is a part of this. Mm -hmm. And I think what's interesting, you having all your experience, 15 plus years in lifting game, coaching individuals, you kind of take more of that long game approach to things where a lot of people want that shortcut or they want that one thing, one approach, and you're talking about sustainable habits they'll see people through. You know, you'll want, you, you won't get success until you're done searching for the short term fix. Yeah. And that's the reality of it. The reason why the snake oil salesmen and saleswomen and fitness do so well is because they're dealing with a huge, but mark it's a huge market that isn't going to be there for long. Yeah. It's the people who are spinning their wheels over and over again because they're not quite ready to commit to something. Yeah. And they're capitalizing on that. They're yeah. saying, look, you don't actually need to commit. Just take 
just give me your money and yeah. I'll give you this one one cool trick. Yeah. Um, but eventually, when they have been you know burned so many times, or they realize this is just not working. They go to someone who's producing good content and has sustainable things that they can use, and that's going to be the people who are actually going to get lifestyle changes. Yeah. So you can play the long game and you know not have to worry about getting exposed as a fake because that's really what you are when you're yeah. selling these gimmicks. Yeah. And maybe have a whole career as a fitness professional. Yeah. Or you can go for the fast money and take advantage of people and prevent people from actually moving on to a point when they can actually make real change in their lives. Yeah, it's like whether whether you want to see people actually succeed and that's a true coach like yourself or whether basically you want to make money from individuals. And so it's two different paths and I still think well, the overall fitness IQ has improved quite a lot in the last six years. Just think seven years ago, kids these days, you kids these days don't remember what it's like before flexible dieting. Right now, every, everyone, it's kind of a given or the fact that strength is important for a natural individual trying to build size, all these things. But perspective is very important. And I mean, Eric, you're dropping so much knowledge right now in this video. I ain't even mad that you're out angling me hard. Okay. I just want to say that there is no visual illusion going on. Oh, there. there's no visual. Yeah. This is actually <laughs> how big my arm is. Yeah. And then Omar is really small, and yeah. that's why he's brought me out here to help him not yeah. be so small. And that's why he had to mention that he has a mansion and all this money. Yeah. Compensation. Gonna, you got to make the up compensation. For yeah. Right. Money yeah. for nothing, bro. I yeah. just want to say uh, this was really an intervention for me. Mm. You said you know you have to do curls, and I said I can't just do pull-ups. That's right. I found out the hard way. You know, the funny thing is he actually can't do pull-ups. Yeah. In all of his videos, there's a, there's a, a guy. A band at the bottom. Yeah, there's exactly. that. Just <laughs> pushing it up. I don't think I've worked out in about 10 years. And you know you look great for not. Oh, thank you. Yeah. And with that being said, you look great considering all those factors. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Eric, thank you so much for being on the channel. Where can people find you? Check out 3dmusclejourney.com. Uh, we produce a lot of content for those who are uh, natural lifters, whether you're a competitor or not. Uh, we're all about strength, physique, but also 3D muscle journey. Yeah. So that's dedication, desire, and discipline, and the long haul. Whole lot of Ds going on there. We got a lot of Ds. <laughs> a lot of Ds. Uh, and guys, finally, you made it all the way to the end of the video. If you like the video, make sure to like the damn video. I'm going to link everything that Eric just said in the description. Stay tuned for that upcoming Kaizen nutrition product. We're going all the way in. That's all the time we have. I'll see all you guys, my rascals, in that next video. Peace. Peace. Oh, you are. Oh, I, I was going to give you the nod, let you go with me, and then you jumped the gun. That's cool. Well, I'm just. I, I ain't even mad. I ain't even mad. I ain't even mad. Yep.